cannot do it. All right, guys. Uh, any questions from anything you're working on? Even if you're working on section 2.7 that I said was extra credit, yeah, you could ask about that. I don't know if anyone's, well, I mean, we just barely got into chapter three last time. So I don't blame you having gotten into chapter three yet. Okay, I'm gonna assume everything's fine. So let's do this. Uh oh, I just lost somebody. Let's do this. Let's let me share my screen. Let's see, can I do this? Yes, I like it. Okay. Oh, so let's try something out. Oh shit! Let's make it so I can draw. Okay, I've got myself graph over here. Let's go ahead and make this just normal one, two, three, four, five kind of uh, scale, right? So I'm just going to put the positives on here just to set the scale, right? Um, so let's say, let me give you guys a few points. Go ahead and make your own graph or if you have some graph paper, that's really nice for yourself. It doesn't matter. You're not going to show this to me. This is just something you're doing yourself. Um, you don't have to use graph paper, so don't freak out. So let's say I've got this happening. Uh, what do you got, Jeff? Uh, sure. All right. So one thing we have to know how to do, and, and we've talked about this before, so I, I think we all know how to do this. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead, go ahead and graph those points, plot those points on a graph. Just remind you guys, this is the X, this is the Y. Since I have a little bit of time, I'll go ahead and fill this all in. There she is, she's back, all right. I watch a lot of horror movies, but I don't think I've ever seen that creature behind you, Tanya. Doll face man. Uh, looks like something from that movie Nine, huh? The Conjuring. No way! Wait, yeah. oh, that's oh, okay, okay. I thought it was The Collector for a minute. It's the Conjuring. I've seen that movie. I don't remember that. Oh well, I should watch it again. All right. So just to remind you guys, if you have any trouble plotting the... Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, man. I got to tell you, that's one thing I like about the online thing. I could just mute everybody in the room. I can't do that on campus. Um, so this is the x-axis so the first part is either if it's negative you go back if it's positive you go forward so i'm going to go back to and i don't put a point yet because then i have to do what this guy says up five so there's a point right there negative two five i like it and then negative one three and then zero what is happening sorry all right and then one negative one right there. Now, can somebody tell me what is the linear growth that we see? There's a, there's linear growth here. Um, and actually it's, you know, it's linear. I don't know if you call it shrink. I don't know, it says it's not growing, it's shrinking, but how much is it changing? Every time I take a step up one on the X, on the X, 
How much is the Y changing? Two. Yeah, it's going down two, down two. I like it. And it does it every single time. So it's linear. And it's not really growth because, of course, it's shrinking as I go. So this is the graph of my profit. I am not a happy person, right? And let me see. I figured out something. Let me see if I could do this. Let me really, I'm going to try this. What problem this. are you guys working on? I have made this problem up for my own brain. Oh, okay. It's always exciting. Let me see if I can do this. You ready for this? I'm not ready for this, obviously. All right. Let's see. Come on, Jeff. All right. Screw it. That's that's not for me. That's pretty good. All right. All right. So the what we're trying to get here is this kind of makes sense that when I say rate of change. rate of change so as my in as my x's change by one my y's go down two so i can make a ratio out of that just like we do for any rate of change i want this to really make sense so if after every hour i moved 20 miles further every hour i go 20 miles further how fast am i going what's my rate of change every hour I'm 20 miles further. 20 miles per hour. 20 miles per hour. I make a, you can make a ratio out of it. So for every one step in the X, I go down two. So it's down two for every one. Just like 20 miles per hour, per hour. 20 miles for every one hour. So this is, I lost two for every step of one. And again, I know a lot of you guys probably know where this is headed. This is the idea of slope, but it's exactly the same as any rate of change. It's a ratio of how much the Y's change per how much the X's change. Just like distance divided by time is your speed, same idea. All right, maybe, maybe, maybe. So it's sort of like a speed. How fast is this decreasing? Well, it's going down two for every one I go over. So, let me see, I created a, a graph down there, but I don't want to do that yet. I'm going to go down here. Ha. So what if I had um, something that, uh, let's see, how do I want to do this? I want to do it on the same graph somehow. Yeah, let's do this. So what if I start here, but I go down three for every one? So if I go down three for every one, if I go down one, two, three for every one, I don't even have to make a table then because I, I the table is nice because I can plot the points, but I really want you guys to get this connection. I don't even, if I know I go down three for every one, I go up on the X, down three for every one, just like this is down two over one, down two over one. Now this should really line up with what you remember about slope. So if I went down three over one, down three over one, down three, one, two, three over one. You can see how that of course is decreasing faster because now it's going down three instead of just down two. That only makes sense. Let me see, are you gonna try this again, Jeff? Yeah, I'm gonna try it again, Dad Gummit. All right, I can do this. Oh, Jeff, come on, you can do it. All right, that's not bad for me. All right, screw it, get out of here. All right, so the rate of change for the guy in red would be down three over one. So let me ask you this, without making a table, can you figure out what this guy's rate of change is? So if you pick a point, 
how do you get to the next point? How much do you go down and how much do you go over? I don't know. Is it too easy of a question? What's happening? Am I, am I frozen? Oh, oh no, I'm not. Okay. How much do I go down? Negative four. No. Oh, yeah. I went down one, two, three. And how much do I go over? One. One. In fact, let's make a table of values. Let's really, let's really throw this in our face. What point is this? What point is this right here? What point is this? Uh oh. First point? I can't see where you're pointing to. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. I got to remember this point. <laughs> zero. Point? Yeah, zero. Zero and one. No, zero and one is there. That's, that's the second point. Yeah, zero, zero. I'm sorry. No, zero, zero is there. Okay, okay. Maybe we should take a step zero, back. Zero, three. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. A lot of people randomly unmute. I don't get that. Um, yeah, let's, let's remember. All right, there's multiple skills happening here, but identifying points needs to be one that we can do relatively quickly. So, so that is definitely the point. Say again, sorry. Zero, three. True. Now, what point is this one? That is one, one. So yeah, one zero. One one would mean over one, up one, but I, I went mean, over one, zero, one, yeah, one zero. didn't go up or down at all. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Maybe I should do a problem like that instead of what we're doing right now. All right, let's, let's do this first. We'll come back to this. I feel like we need to do this. I'm going to plot several points and I want you to identify what they are. Okay. Let's start here. And this is just the same scale, right? Negative one, negative two, negative three. Oh my God, Jeff, are you going to write them all down? Really? It looks like I am. All right, Jeff, fine. You don't have to even copy this down if you don't want to, but just take a minute. Don't say anything out loud. Just identify what these points are. It's trying to be a D. God damn it. All right. So just write down what those points are. Don't say anything out loud. All right, now somebody help me out. Does somebody know what A, what's point A? Negative four, four. I like it, right? Because how do I get to A? It's really like finding somebody else's house. Oh yeah, man, you go four blocks west and you go four blocks north, right? So negative means it's west and positive means it's north in that direction. So it's always X, Y. So somebody else, so what's B? Negative two, negative two. Good, you go back two blocks and down two blocks and you're at my house, yay, down two, down two. 
What about C? Positive two, zero. Good. You go over two and you don't go up or down at all. All right, now somebody else, what's D? And the four zero. Good. You go down. Well, no, no, no. Careful. I mean, I got excited there for a second. Do I go left or right at all? Oh, ne yeah, negative four zero, right? Negative four zero would be right here. Oh, four. No, no, no. Come on, think about it. Four. The first number is how much I go left or right. Zero. Do I go left or right, or do I just go straight down? Straight down. Good. So I don't go left or right at all. So that's zero. Zero in this direction. Four down. Zero, negative four. Huh? There you go. Does everybody get that? The first number tells you how much you go left and right. So if I live here and I want to get to this house, I'm not going to go left or right at all. I'm just going to go down four. So zero in this direction. Four down in that direction. I like it. I like it a lot. All right. All right. And then what about E? Four and five. five. Four. I like it. Four and then five. I like it. And what's my house? Let me make my house H for my house. What's the point H, my house? What's this point right there? Zero, zero. Yeah, don't move, don't move, because I'm already home like everybody in the freaking United States. I'm sorry. <laughs> I remember being able to go places. Those were the days, man. All right, let me see. Okay. You need that skill. Don't make more out of that than it is. The first number tells you how much to move this way, and the second number tells you how much to move that way. That, that's all it is. So uh, this also is Salt Lake City. Has, has anybody ever been to Salt Lake City? Salt Lake City, I'm a math guy, and Salt Lake City's freaked me the shit out. It is so perfectly a grid that you go a little crazy. My hometown, I had a street that intersected with itself. So I'm sorry, I just remember that. It was, the streets were like spaghetti, and, but that was exciting. You can go get lost somewhere and whatever. Anyway, sorry. Sorry, I go off on tangents, I know. All right, so coming back up here. Has everybody got that? So that is what we call a basic skill that you need to be able to do any of what we're about to get into. So from this, we saw, how do I get from this house to this house? I go down three blocks and over a block. And then do I do the same thing to get to this house then? I go down one, two, three blocks, over a block. Right? Do you guys see that? So that's the rate of change would be down three over one. And if I put in a table, what point is this one? What's, what's this point here? Let me put it here. I'm going to put it over there. What point is that one? What, 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 what point is three, that? Two. Careful, it's, you, you, you do the left and right first. Negative three, two. No, you do the left and right first. So how much do I have to move over or back? I have to move one, two over. Positive two, negative three. And then three down, so two, Negative three, do you guys, do you see that? Negative three, two would be here. Negative three would be negative three, two. This would be the point negative three, two. Do, do, is that cool? This is negative three, two, which is not on my line. All right, let me stop for a minute. The first number is always left and right. The second number is always up and down. Okay, okay, I like it. And then looking at this, what's the linear growth here from the table? All right, thank you. What's the linear growth from the table? When the X changes by one, how much do the Y's change? Negative three. 
It goes down by three each time, right? That's exactly what we saw from the graph. It went down three over one. Okay, cool. I like it. Here comes the chat. Oh, you're okay. Don't worry. I, I, I forgot I changed it. I used to mute everybody when they came in the room, and now I don't do that. But um, you guys didn't know I did that, so I didn't even tell you. I'm evil. Um, okay. So I, what I really want you to get from this experience is this relationship we see in the table is graphically represented by just how much do I go down and over? There's a beautiful connection between the numbers themselves and the way they look in a graph. So answer me this, if the next point, so I go down one, two, three, over one. If I went down two over one, is that point on the line? Is that point right there on the line? No, I really, come on. So to be a straight line, the rate of change must remain constant. Now that kind of makes sense, right? If, it's, if the rate of change did not remain constant, it would curve. It would do all kinds of freaky things. But if the rate of change is constant, that makes it stay straight. It's like steps, down three over one, down three over one, down three over one. And that'll be another point on the line, bam. All right, do, you, do you always write it Y over X? Yes, I love it. Because the reason that we've chosen to do that, and, and because we chose to do that, very often this axis, what we call the X axis, very often is time. And this axis, the Y axis, is some kind of an amount, like a distance, an amount of distance, an amount of words written, an amount of uh, potatoes peeled, right? So if it's Y over X and it's potatoes per hour, there you go. It's a rate of change, isn't it? If I do the Y divided by the X, it would be an amount per time. That would be a rate of change. I really want that to make sense. So what Vu just said, is it always Y over X? Yes. We've chosen it to be that. So then we make this axis and this axis things that make sense for that choice. I wouldn't say hours per mile. Wouldn't that be weird? Yeah, man. I was getting like point, I was getting like 0. 0.2 hours a mile. What, what, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? It's miles per hour. All right, maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. All right, let me see. So let's do this. I'm going to give you, yeah, here we go. I like this. I'm going to give you some points, some, some X values. I want you to create, I'm going to give you this first Y value, right? I want the, line, the rate of change to be um, positive uh, two. I want you to fill this in knowing that. And this is going back a while. We, we did exactly this before. So positive two over one. I want the rate of change to be two per one. So I want the rate of increase to be two for every one. See if you can fill in that chart. So really, just to make sure everybody understands, if you get the second one, you should be good. If my X goes up by one, my Y must go up by how much? Positive two. It's gotta go up by two. So what's go what am I gonna put here? Negative two. Negative two, kick ass, keep going, all right, I like it. So I want you to do two things, finish that table out and then plot your points. 
<laughs> you got to change that setting back. All right. So if you add two here, this should be zero. If you add another two, this is two. If you add another two, as a four. And when I go to plot these, so the negative two, so back two. So this point right here, back two down four, back one down two, right? Is that cool? Back one down two for that guy. This is nice, we're home there, stay home. Bam, I don't go anywhere. Now I go over one, up two. And then I go over to up four. Does that make a, 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 um, a, a shape? Good Lord, Jeff. I forgot how to talk there for a minute. You gotta excuse me. Does that make a shape? What do you mean by shape? What's the, the slope? Yeah, does it look like a... a well, I know that's kind of a weird question. It's a straight line, right? Yeah. Let me see if I can't make a straight line. That'd be so cool if I can make a straight line. I don't know what I'm doing down there. All right, try this again, Jeff. Here we go, buddy. You're gonna do it. All right. Not a good start, not a good start. All right, no, still not a good start. Oh, this is so exciting. I love Jeff's class. Sit here and just watch him incapable of making a straight line. Really trying. All right, there we go. It's not terrible for me. Now, now, if you pick any point on this line, it makes some purple. Why not? So let's pick this point right there. How do you get to the next point after it? I have to go up, go up two over one. So that's the visualization of that growth, right? So in the chart, I can see the growth by, I can see here it goes up two for every one that it goes up on the X. So when the X, when it goes up one, it goes up two on the Y. So I know it's got a growth of two per one X. On the chart, it makes sense. A growth of two in the Y means I'm gonna go up two in the Y direction and then over one in the X direction, up two in the Y direction, over one in the X direction, up two in the Y direction, over one in the X direction. Oh my God, okay. I like it. All right, let's try one more and then we're gonna go back in the book. Let me see, do I have any blanks left? No, let me do this. I'm gonna save this. I don't know why I'm gonna save it, but just if I don't, I know I'm gonna want it later. Bam. All right, so let me open up another blank graph. Doo, doo, doo. Can you see the blank, a blank graph now? I don't really trust my technology. Yeah. Anybody? Yes, thank you. So what I want you to do now is if you start at the point um, negative five, negative four, 
And then I want you to apply on the graph, not in a table, apply a rate of change. Oh, this sounds so freaky. Of um, what, Jeff? So let's do four to one. Let's see if you guys get what I'm trying to say here. Start at the point negative five, negative four. So I'll go ahead and plot that. So here's negative five, negative four right there. I want you to finish the graph out just by me telling you it's going to grow by a rate of four to one. And again, if you don't quite get what I'm saying, we're in the learning stage. That's a beautiful time to not have a clue what the shit's going on. It's when you're in the quiz stage that it sucks to not have a clue what's going on. Right now, it's fine. Somebody went to sleep. Was that snoring? What was that? Sorry, that was a dog. Okay. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I lost somebody. What was that? Did I ever tell you guys about the time a teacher, one of my colleagues came to evaluate me and they fell asleep in the back of the room? <laughs> my students were like, he's snoring. <laughs> it was fantastic. It was great. I'm like, what a great evaluation I'm going to get. He came up and gave me a note saying, I'm on medication. I'm sorry. We'll do this again later. <laughs> I'm like, all right. Anyway, that was a major boost to my confidence. That was like early on in my career. I'm like, oh my God, I'm boring as shit. Damn. All right, let me see if you guys are getting what I'm laying down here. So rate of change of four to one. What the hell does that mean? So where am I going to go from this point here? This is my starting point. Where do I go to get to my next point? What does that mean and what does that mean? It means go over four and Careful, up not one. Over. It's not over. It's not over. Negative. Your next point will be negative four zero. Don't tell me what the next point is. Tell me how to get there. Oh. Go over one. Over one. Okay, I can deal with that. Over one. And, and? up four. Yeah, so this means up four over one i love it so up so you can go over one up four one two three four or you can go up four over one either way you're going to get to that place right if that was somebody's house and they said go four blocks north and one block east i'm like well i'm going to go one block east and then four blocks and it's like whatever man you'll get to my house either way so it doesn't matter which one you do first and then where's the next point going to be Negative three, positive four. Yeah, over one, up four. Kick ass. So over one, right? Over one, up one, two, three, four. I like it. And of course, the next point would be off my chart here, right? So, all right, Jeff. This is such a great way to do this. Let's see if I can make this work. It's, it's, come on, Jeff. That looks almost good. It's a little bit curvy. Oh, well. Oh, crappity dude. All right, that's, that's almost straight. All right, screw it. Woo! So there's a connection between all this. Did I, did I need to make a table of values for this? No, I could I have? Yeah, I didn't need to. So this is the visualization of the table of values. That's what a graph is. A graph gives me the table of values in a visual format instead of the X, Y table kind of format in a, in a um, well, I mean, graphical format. All right, maybe, maybe, maybe. So let's get into the book. Let's see what the book has to say about this stuff instead of me just making shit up. I'm going to stop sharing that. I'm going to share the 
book. Bam. Oh, I forgot to let me spotlight myself. It's all about me. All right. Bam. Okay. Uh, let me see. Where are you, book? Book, come back. There you are. Okay. Now I need people again. There's people. And there is book. So let me ask you this. So here's a here's a graph representing the depreciation, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. The minute you buy a car and you drive it out of the dealership, the value starts going down immediately. We all know this all too well. And to be really honest, it's probably going to go down kind of like steeply. Wah! But we're assuming this has got a linear depreciation. It goes down in value at a constant rate. Let me ask you what you think about this. What's the y-axis represent in this problem? Value. Change in value. Good. So the y-axis is, is kind of like the actual value of the car. I like it. And of course, the x-axis represents years after you get it. So how much did the car cost right when you bought it? 15000 I like it. So, and, and what is interesting about this point, let me, let me kind of extend this graph a little bit so it makes it a little more so. They only showed the first piece of this. In fact, let me go ahead and say this because I know I'm, I'm going to say this word. When you make an XY table, uh, table, when you make an XY graph, this is called a coordinate system. This is actually called the Cartesian coordinate system. After good old French dude, Rene Descartes, he was sick in bed watching a fly walking on Mike Pence's head, I mean on the ceiling, and he envisioned a way to talk about how the fly was moving. So yeah, math was created by sick French dudes in bed, or at least, you know, this piece. Um, that's why we call that the Cartesian. It's after a guy named Descartes. So we call this the Cartesian. Is this really that big of a deal, Jeff? Not really, but I just want you to know shit. Cartesian coordinate system. Watching that fly was pretty. I know, sorry. <laughs> anyway, the fly is not political. I love it. He just, he just, anyway, I'm not going to say what he's about to say about what flies normally find. Um, so the XY plane, when I draw this, I make four quad, uh, quadrants. I break it up into four parts. So this is the first quadrant, the second quadrant, the third quadrant, and the fourth quadrant. So these are the quadrants. All right. So when they did this graph, they really just gave me the first quadrant because that's where everything was happening. So I just wanted to, to add in the whole thing here a bit. And I forget why I wanted to do that now. Oh, well, I just wanted to. Um, so when they say, what do we call the y-intercept? Which point is actually on the y-axis? Which beginning. Sorry. sorry? 15,000. Yeah, so this one is on the y-axis. And why does that make sense? I mean, what does that zero mean? That first number being a zero, what does that mean? Let me see if I can draw that better. Yeah, they're all you crap. Let me see. Oh yeah, I forgot. Now I can do this. All right, guys. All right, that's not bad. Okay. That thing helps me out with straight lines. Um, so the fact that this first number is a zero means that I would not move left or right at all. I would only move up or down. So of course, if now really, now listen, this is huge. If the first number is a zero in a point, that means it's the Y intercept that I'm talking about. Why does that make sense? Because if the first number was a something else than zero, I would move off. I would move off of the y-axis. And then when I go up or down, I'm not on the y-axis anymore. 
So how do I make sure my point's going to be on the y-axis? I have to make sure that the first part of it is zero. So it doesn't move away from it. So that's zero. So then I only go up 15,000. So that's the y-intercept. The y-intercept is zero, 15,000. So every y-intercept in the universe looks like zero comma something. Now we already explained what this means. What does that point represent? You already told me a minute ago. What does that point represent? What does the zero mean? Physically, what are the X's in this problem? What did we say earlier? Sorry? The day you bought it. The, 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 what does X represent specifically? Yeah, it is the day you bought it because X is the number of years after you bought it. So at zero years after you bought it means that's the instant you're buying it. I love it. So what does 15,000 mean then? The value of the vehicle brand new. I love it. So the value it was when you got it. Was this a new, it's a used car. That makes more sense. But I'm with you. It was new to me. That's why I've had so many cars that were new to me, let's say. So that means it's the original price, original value, if you want to call it. Well, let me stop for a minute. So y-intercept is where it hits the y-axis. So x-intercept would be where it hits the x-axis. That's crazy, Jack. Okay, I like it. Now this, why is it harder to see the slope in the graph? Because the scale is kind of gross, right? The scale is kind of gross, it's just the way it is. But I can see this, I can see the slope in the um, table. Can somebody figure out what the slope is, what the rate of change is? You can even have units now. What's the rate of change that you see in the table? Let me take away some of my scribble. 2,000 over one. Be careful. You wish. There's only one mistake. Negative 2,000. I like it. Right? It goes down 2,000 for every one year. So it's negative 2,000. So it loses $2,000 per year. There you go, that makes sense. That's a rate of change. And that is the slope of the line. It makes sense that it's going down because the slope is negative. Slope is negative, therefore the graph should be going down. Beautiful, so if you're a company, you want your profit slope to be positive normally. I don't know, unless you're a stable genius and then you wanna save money on taxes, so you make your, anyway, anyway. Jeff, 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 stop, stop, stop. Stable genius. All right. So I'm going to clear all this away. So the main things to get from this problem, the really only new thing was this idea of a y-intercept and an x-intercept and what that means. That's really the only new thing. And then I had to tell you all about Descartes. You can look that shit up if you want to, kids, about the fly on the ceiling. All right. So I'm going to clear all this away. Bye. So we already did this. We already did number 15. I don't care about that. Blah, 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 whatever. Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we already talked about that. So here's something interesting. Think about number 19 based on what I just said. So given some line, how would you find the X and the Y intercept? Oh, Jeff, what the hell did you just do? Oh, that's Funkadelic. Let's do, yeah. Shua, there's a line. Look at that, I should have just been doing that.
So how do you find the x-intercept? Where would that be? Where the line intersects the x. That's right. And what is that value now that I put some scale on here? Jeff, Ooh, let me do something interesting. So what is the x-intercept? Horizontal, is that what you're asking? Negative three. All right, I like it. So uh, Tanya, I think it was, or who just asked that question? Uh, anyway. Horizontal, I understand what you mean. Yeah, so it's on the x-axis. So the x-intercept is where it hits the x-axis, and it's going to be this point right there. And the x-intercept is a point, so it must have two parts to it. So it's negative three. Zero. Zero. Good guess. What's the y-intercept? Zero, zero, 15. Good. Zero, 15. Kick ass. Right there and right there. So what's always true about any x-intercept, what will always be true about the point? The y value will be zero. That will always be zero. And what's always true about the y-intercept? The x value will be zero. That will always be zero. I love it. And I really want that to just make freaking so much sense. How could it be an x-intercept if I move up or down, then I'm not on the x-axis anymore. So I can't go up or down at all, which means this has to be zero because that's the one that controls the up and down. And the same thing for the y-intercept, I can't move left or right, so this must be zero for the y-intercept. Okay, maybe, 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 maybe. Now visually it makes, it's just a ton of sense. The y-intercept is that point, y, because that's where this intercepts the y-axis, and that's where this intercepts the x-axis, hence the name, y and x-intercept. I like it. All right, I'm gonna clear this. Goodbye, graph. You are a nice graph. I liked you when you're gone. Oh, cool. Let's take a look at what the homework is going to look like. Yeah, so they start with a nice example. Well, this is not all that great. Ooh, this is going to be neat. You're going to have fun with that one. All right. So this one, they give you a relationship. They ask you to finish filling this in. So what you're going to see is they're going to be going back to um, – you can do it, Jeff. Earlier kind of problems that we've done. Let, let's do the first step of this one. So Genesis, Hyundai Genesis. I've never heard of that. Who's got? Uh, let me see. I don't know who's talking. I don't see who is. Oh, there. There we go. Okay. Um, so it's it, the important part of this. Don't worry about this part. Don't worry about the 2.9 shit because they actually tell you something very directly. Um, they tell you this right here. 2209 per $1,000 borrowed. So that's why they put 2209 right there if you borrowed $1,000. So what would it be if you borrowed $2,000? What would go here? 4418. 4418, of course. Is that everybody with me? So it's linear growth. It goes up by 2209 for every thousand dollars that this goes up. I like it. Anyway, so that's just to get you started. Once you get this sucker filled in, you should be able to, uh, what do you call it, do the rest of these problems. I like it. Uh, let's see what the next grouping looks like. Ooh, I like it. So here we have some depreciation. So we're going to have a negative slope. 
Ooh, I like it. Yeah. You would, Jeff. Okay. That's enough of that. Um, oh, what did I want to do? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's do this. Yeah, this is easy shit. Let's see. Where are some? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Perfect. Go ahead and do number three real quick up here. This is kind of neat. This is like a review of what we just did. I like it. In fact, I'm going to add a question onto this. Why not? That's my prerogative. It's my prerogative. That's going to be a hard one, but I will see if you guys can get it. Going to have to be a, an estimate. I'm going to show you a trick. Yeah, I like it. I'm going to show you a trick. So find the y-intercept, tell me what it means, and then find the slope and what it means. Who's got the y-intercept? Anybody? 11,000, 11, zero? Nope. How do you say? So you just do one thing. And then yeah. 11. Zero. Yeah. yeah, all right. And believe me, it's really easy to get those confused. Um, but remember, this is left and right. And if I want to be in the y-axis, I don't want to go left and right at all. I want to stay. So the first number has got to be that zero. What does that represent? Dollars. When he first got it, it was $11,000. Yeah, when it was first discovered, this is a weird problem, but too bad for us. Uh, when this painting, if the painting was discovered right now, it'd be worth $11,000. I really don't get the point of this, but too bad for us. Um, more, more interestingly, how do you get the slope? Why is this one a hard one to get the slope for? And then I want to show you that that's not true. It's actually not that bad. What are you going to try to do to get the slope? Add 1,000. All right, but if I add 1,000, and so that's part of it. Remember, slope has how many parts to it? Three? Two parts to it. Okay. So, I, 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 so how would you try to find the slope? Well, normally what we do is we start, we get one point and we try to get to the next point. What's kind of gross about that point? It's not direct. Yeah, so let me just, just forget that point. Let me go to that point. So here's the beautiful thing about slope. It doesn't matter. So I, I want you to get this. So can, can we much more easily see how much we go up and over to get to that point instead of this point? How much do I go up here? Remember I had 11. I think it's 3,000. 3,000, because I'm at 11. And I go to 14,000. That's up, uh, I already forgot, 3,000, right? Up 3,000 over how many years? 20. 20. So if I reduce that, what do I get? In fact, just divide by two. Let's make it per 10 years. Wouldn't this be 1,500 for 10 years? Is that cool? 
I know I could reduce it further, but just go with me for a second. Isn't that what that, if I divide by two, divide by two, I get 1,500 per 10 years? So if I went up 1,500, which is really hard to do on the scale, but it would be 1,500 and then go over 10 years, hey, there I am. I don't know if you guys see that. So again, I, I don't think you can see when I do that. So if I go up 1,500, we'd be around right there. And then I go over 20 years, I mean, sorry, 10 years, that's the point. And then if I go up another 1,500 and I go over 10 years, that's the point. So my point is, on a line, it doesn't matter which point you pick, the slope will always reduce to be the same thing. It has to be the same thing. That's why it's a straight line. If it changed between two other points, it would start to curve. It wouldn't be a straight line anymore. So you could take any two points on a line and figure out what the slope is. Now, if I reduce this all the way, what do I get? Just divide by 10, right? I would get $150 per year. Is that cool? And in fact, you got to be... Um, let me think. No, that's all right. It's not that big of a deal. You just divide, you just kind of reduce that fraction all the way and you see how much it goes down, uh, goes up per year. Uh, let me see what, uh, oh, and the what it means for the slope is really just throwing the units in. So it's going to go up $150 every year. Yikes. Crazy. Now, let's take a little preview of what we're going to get into next. Considering that they have problems here about evaluating expressions, it's going to have something to do with that. So let's see what this is. I'm going to clear all this stuff away. Is that all right? Everybody's good with that? Okay. It's going to go away. Bye, all you stuff. So let's take a little preview of what's coming up. So let's see, right up here, learning objectives. A snow job, okay, that's interesting. Write expressions based on given information, interpret algebraic expressions and context. So we're gonna be doing a lot of stuff with expressions. And I think, let's take even a longer gaze ahead here, let's see. Let's get to 3.3, three. let's really look forward to 3.3. Three. Get out of here. Here we go. Yeah, we're working our way up to equations. And then if I look at three, four, just go with me for a minute, everybody. You're all like, that's all we ever do every day, Jeff. We just go with whatever the shit you're talking about. Then eventually we get back to inequalities. That's kind of nifty. Kind of, uh, we're gonna take a much more algebraic bend here. We've been doing some statistics. We were doing some probabilities. Now we're gonna to start to come back to algebra, straight up algebra. Uh, I have no idea how you feel about that, but it's just what we're gonna do. Um, all right. So personally, I think that's plenty for today. Um, you guys feel the same? It almost doesn't matter, because I'm gonna I'm gonna end class. Uh, if you guys have any questions and wanna hang out, let me know. Uh, otherwise, you are free to Go do almost anything you want to, within reason. Don't break any laws, kids. I just wanted to tell you, it's actually Nightbreed, the background. Oh, the old Clive yeah. Barker. There you go. Yeah. Totally. Oh my yeah. God, I haven't yeah. seen that. I haven't seen that. You know, I actually met Clive Barker. Oh, really? That's cool. He, he was signed. Oh, there's a little dude behind you. Hello. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dragon Ball Z, there you go. Come yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Have no, a good day. I, I remember that. I remember that. I haven't seen that movie in forever. How's everybody else? You guys have any questions or anything? Or everybody good? All right. I'm gonna head out. I'll see you guys later. Bye. What's up? Sorry. Everybody good? Oh yeah. I just said bye. Okay. Bye, everybody. <laughs>